All right, it is a new week, and with a new week, we always check our course outline to see what's going on, always from the home page, right? And today is October 21st. We're going to be turning in our assignment for today. Whether your logo is beautiful or whether it is tragic, we are going to try to turn in a vector version of it today. And then, of course, as long as you submit something, even just a refined sketch by the deadline today, you can resubmit later and improve it. We're also going to have all four group presentations today. And I asked you to be ready at the beginning of class, but we're going to, to finish up the coloring on assignment four first. So hopefully it will only take about two videos to show you that, and then we'll start with blue group. And then our midterm exam is next class. So at the end of class today, I'll share with you the topics that are on the midterm exam and how we'll do a review session for that. And then, most importantly, proving ground number three is next class. And I say most importantly because it's our first time we're doing a full class gallery critique, which means we need to print for it. So by the end of today's class, definitely by the end of tonight, everyone needs to have three pieces from the first half of the class submitted in the way they need to to their printing folder, and I'll show you where that is. And it would be great if one of those can be your logo, right? Either a color logo or a black logo. But if you never, if you never finish your vector logo, then it can be three other projects, exercises, proving grounds from the first half of the class. All right, so let's jump right into it. When we left assignment four, which we are continuing now, what we had posted was our black shape logo. But I'll review that very quickly because it's a little tricky, especially with the limitations of the freeware. But you can see I've posted my refined sketch, which is pixel based, right? And then I posted a PNG of my vector or a JPEG from vector.com made with the vector program. Because it was made with the vector program at vector.com, it's quite a bit cleaner than just my refined sketch was. If I open vector.com, I can go to my home or my designs and I can find that project. Mine is right here. Right. And in vector.com, it remembers, because you log in with an email, all of your individual paths. Each of them is a vector. You can just turn off the ones you want don't want, like I took the crown out, and then I can modify all these anchor points, right? That's all great. Once you have this, and once you're happy with it, using the freeware, I then ask you to click on this export button. If you also do Command S, you'll get to the same place, because it's just like saving out of Photopea. But you're going to click on this export button, and the problem is, this is what we found out was new with this program since last semester, is I am not able to export it as a vector format without subscribing and paying. But we have access to Adobe Illustrator. We have access to this lab. And so there is this one feature that now I have no idea how you can do it without paying for it, which is turning a raster image into a vector image. And the good news is because we created it in a vector program, this will vectorize beautifully. So. You're going to do it as a JPEG, which is the only way you can do it for free. And then you're going to make sure, because we have to make it a JPEG, which is pixel-based raster format, not vector, we have to give it a pixel dimension. And so the pixel dimension we're going to do is a minimum of 3,000 pixels wide. So I type in 3,000 there in pixels, not inches, in pixels. And then I download. This doesn't change anything about your vectors. They're all there in vector.com. You can keep working on it, but I ask you to do that at the beginning of class now so we can learn how to do color variations to it and how we can turn it into a vector file. So now I'm going to close vector.com and I am going to go to my downloads where that JPEG is. And they just call it page zero JPEG. I'll move it to my desktop and I'm going to rename it. But I'm not going to rename it my assignment. I'm going to rename it my test black logo assignment four. 
I say I call things test files and I label them purple when they are transitional. They're needed digital files to get me to the digital file I want. Okay. This could be submitted to Canvas, and that's what I submitted there. Works for Canvas, but doesn't work as a vector. Because it was created as a vector, but we save it as a JPEG to put to Canvas. Now I'm going to teach all of you how to do it as a vector. And if you're not able to, I can help you with it after class. Okay. So what we do now is we take that JPEG and we're going to right click on it and we're going to open it with a vector program that you actually have to pay for, right? which is Adobe Illustrator. It doesn't matter which version. I have three different versions on this computer. So I'm just going to use 2025, which just came out because I like its opening graphic. But when you do that, you are opening up a JPEG, a pixel-based image, even though you created it as a vector, look, it turned it back into pixels, right? Because we saved it as a JPEG. We rasterized it. So now the whole point of using Illustrator is to turn it back into a vector for us. So what we need to do, you're going to see how it's a very similar to, to vector.com, but not as similar as PhotoP is similar to Photoshop. We're going to use the large selection tool which doesn't even exist in vector.com. It's just clicking with vector.com. This is what double clicking and clicking is. So click on your JPEG, take the corner of it, hold down shift to lock the proportions and hold down option. So shift and option while you click and drag to shrink it onto what's called the artboard. As long as all of your black shapes are within the rectangle, then it will save well as a vector. Okay. Out of, Illustrator. Then you can click on it and we're going to go to the properties tab. You see there's a layers tab just like in vector.com and just like in vector.com there's a properties tab which tells you what color, the stroke, all of that. In Illustrator, which this vector.com does not have this, we also have an image trace option. So if we click on image trace, image tracing is tracing an image that is pixel based into a vector just like we did in vector.com by hand this is to automate that process this is not using ai tools right this is just using what's been in illustrator for decades now especially if it's black and white and clean it's going to work very well when you click on image trace you'll get all these options and we're going to use the obvious one which is black and white logo now notice I said black and white logo, but do we want our black shape vector to be black shapes and white shapes? No, no we want it only black shapes. So I need to show you how to set, set those settings. And we can tell because my JPEG, JPEGs always fill an empty space with white, right? So how do we get the PNG? Well, we need to turn it into a vector first and then bring it into photo P and save it as a PNG. So you can see the white there. I need to make that white disappear. I do that by clicking on these advanced options for image trace, which are right next to it. Click there. It opens up this advanced panel. And then I need to open up the drop down for the advanced options. So it's a lot of steps. And this is kind of how professionals protect their job. They make it hard for people to know how to do this kind of thing. Because with any client, you're going to have to make vector format things from their raster images and you're going to need to clean them up and this is how you do it so under these advanced options there's only one thing you need to click and everything else will be automated and great and that is ignore the color because on a black and white logo the color is the white right so if i click that you're going to notice that this background is going to disappear not the artboard but the the white in the image so i click on ignore color Okay, right now it is a vector, but it is a preview of a vector. You see, now all the pixels have gone away. Perfectly clean vector. But in order to generate it as a vector, I need to hit this button in properties, which is expand. It basically says, okay, take this preview, because you can also play with all of these advanced settings and change your shapes a little bit. But when you hit expand, it will turn it into vector shapes. And you can use the small selection tool to see all of those different anchors, just like you had them in vector.com. The difference is now we have a vector shape. 
It's always a good idea to use your large selection tool, move it onto the gray to make sure there's no white in your image. Sure enough, no white. Move it back on. And now we can save it as a vector file, which is just the one thing we can't do for free out of vector.com. My guess is vector.com to subscribe for is a lot cheaper than to subscribe for Illustrator, but I'm trying to show you the true freeware ways to do it. So you can always use this lab to do this last step of just image tracing in Illustrator. Okay, now that I've expanded it, it's a vector, I just need to save it. So I go to File, Save As. The first thing I'm gonna save is an AI version. That's an Adobe Illustrator version, just because it's smart to have. And it's not gonna be my test black logo anymore. Now it's gonna be my Carl black logo assignment four as an AI to the desktop, save. AI does not stand for artificial intelligence, it stands for Adobe Illustrator. And then just use all the defaults. Next, you cannot open an AI file in Photopea. You need what's called a transferable vector format. And for that, there are two that you can save out of Illustrator that I want you to know. The first is the oldest format, which is kind of glitchy, but is a good thing to have as a backup because it can be viewed by any vector program. And that is an SVG. So we're gonna save a copy and we're gonna change the format to SVG, the one on the bottom. It stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. It's hot with your head wrap, right? We lose a lot of heat from our head. It's uncomfortable. And then the final type, so we're saving as three vector formats, which seems like a lot, but vectors, remember, can generate any size image. So someone that creates a vector wants to make sure they have their bases covered, especially if you don't always have access to the programs. So the third type, we're gonna say file save as a copy or save a copy, and it's going to be what's called an EPS file. EPS file is a transferable vector format for Adobe programs. And what's nice is because PhotoP is a clone of Photoshop, it supports EPS and SVG, but it supports them slightly differently. So it's good to have both. Okay, now that I've saved all of those using all the defaults, I'm gonna close Illustrator, don't need it anymore, and I'm gonna organize all my work. This is gonna be incredibly important as we start to print, right? So I have my test black JPEG, and this is a repeat of what I've done in previous videos, right? I've got my AI file. I'm gonna mark that as green because that's a finished vector file. I've got my SVG file. I'm gonna mark that as green because that's a finished vector file. And finished vector files are like gold. And then I have my EPS file. I'm gonna mark that as green. Now you'll notice the EPS file is the only format that doesn't show you a preview. And in this demo, I've saved several EPS, but that's my latest one, so that's the one I'll use, okay? Now, I have vectors. If I go to photop.com, which is a raster program, I'm gonna set up my layout for printing my vector. And to do this, like you're going to do for all of your midterm critique printouts, you're gonna start a new project in PhotoP. And that new project is gonna be our midterm print resolution and midterm print dimensions. So I bet you can guess what those are. So what are our standard sizes? They're in inches. It's going to be, it's going to be eight by 10. So, my image, my logo is longer than it is tall. So I'm gonna do 10 inches wide by eight inches tall. But if your logo is taller than it is wide, you want eight inches wide, 10 inches tall. And then what pixels per inch do I want? You want minimum 300 for, for print resolution, right? Even better, which I call my lab standard, is 350. Because what if you just make it a little smaller than you actually want? That means you can, can print it bigger and it won't lose quality. Leave all the other defaults, but I'm gonna change the name. Because this, and you'll notice when you do that, sometimes it will change your